Murfreesboro and Rutherford County are so rich in their respective histories with many women who've had integral roles in creating our community's sense of place. The Rutherford Arts Alliance is proud to partner with Murfreesboro City TV to showcase a number of these women as a part of our Leading Ladies of Rutherford County History project. From murals to our community-involved play, A Party of Twelve by Mary Donay Johnson, we're proud to honor these diverse women of our past who inspire us as we give them a voice in today's world. Let's find out more about one of these leading ladies. Born in 1863, Willie Betty Newman was an American painter and Murfreesboro native. Her journey to being an artist took her to France and back. She was noted for her portraits of President James K. Polk, John Bell, and many others. Dr. Henry King Butler is an admirer of Newman's art and tells the story of a leading lady not many know. I'm so excited to have my friend, Dr. Henry King Butler, to chat with me about his admiration for a Murfreesboro native and uh, artist, Willie Betty Newman. Henry, I didn't know about Will Be with a Willie Betty Newman before. Tell me about you and your family's relation with her. Thank you, Andrea. My family, actually, it dates back to my grandmother, who, somewhere around 1903 or four, bought this picture. And that's where my story begins, because grandmother had this picture hanging in her living room, very proud of it. And any time I'd go to see her as a small boy, she'd say, yep, that's a Willie Betty Newman, and she's from Murfreesboro. Mm. I heard that a few hundred times. <laughs> so the first artist I ever heard of was Billy Betty Newman. Mm. And I think grandmother may have bought it from her because grandmother was in school in Peabody in Nashville, which at that time was in downtown Nashville. And at that time, Willie Betty Newman had an art studio over on Broadway. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not certain that she did, but it, it dates back to 1903, 1904 in our family. Mm. And your grandmother's full name? Mary Gerhardt. Okay. And she was at Peabody when she got introduced yeah, to Yeah, I didn't realize work. Peabody was downtown Nashville before it mm. moved out to Vanderbilt. Interesting. Yeah. Um, and um, she uh, dearly loved this picture. And we got it when she passed. Mm. And, and tell me where the setting, I mean, do you know where that is? This was in Brittany, France. And she, Willie Betty, was actually in France from around 1890 to 1902. Mm -hmm. She was studying at an art school in Paris, uh, the Julian Academy, and I come to find out that frequently the art schools in Paris would close in the summer and many of the students would go to Brittany. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a whole colony of students and artists at that time who would go to a place called pont a and also Quimberley. And uh, so she spent a fair amount of time there. And this painting was obviously of an interior of a small cottage mm -hmm. in Brittany. Mm -hmm. Now, that was kind of a unique thing for a female to leave Murfreesboro and head to Paris yes. at that time. She was an extraordinary individual. Mm -hmm. and. Her, before she went to Paris, she studied in Cincinnati at a large school there and actually had a scholarship uh, to study at the uh, academy there in, in France. And um, I think prior to leaving uh, this country, she had actually lived just outside of Murfreesboro and her home was what 
called Maple Grove Plantation. And her father was William Betty. And that kind of introduces her name mm. because she was named for her father, therefore Willie Betty. And then um, her husband, only husband, whom she separated from fairly early, uh, was Mr. Newman. So Willie Betty Newman, often you think Betty, well, that sounds like a girl's name, but it was a last name. And uh -huh. Willie was her father, William. And that area where they are is Betty Ford Road, right? Yeah. Two family surnames. Yes. Uh, well, actually, Betty Ford Road, the Ford stands for the Ford in the River. Oh, oh, that's right. Uh, the, um, um, and in those days, they, you go out Betty Ford Road, and you forded the river, and the home, which was built in 1833, was at the top of a hill on the right. So the ford was a ford in the river, which happily now is a bridge. Yes, and that house is still standing. Yeah, it was built in 1833, and it was built by her grandfather, mm -hmm. and her mother was Sophie Rucker, and her grandfather who built the house was Benjamin Rucker. So then it passed to them. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And it's still occupied today yes. as a oh, private yeah. home. Beautiful old home. Mm. Um, and uh, I was in it a few years ago, and it's impressive. Mm. So since the time that you inherited this from your grandmother, um, have you kept up with paintings of hers? Yes, um, kind of a renewed interest. Um, and um, I acquired one other, which is probably from the same Brittany Cottage. Um, but I guess I've got this thing about Brittany Cottage scenes. Um, but uh, just in case people are thinking that's all she did, she had really a diverse talent. Mm. Uh, a number of her paintings were of the French peasants uh, who, uh, particularly in around the Brittany area. And I don't think she did very many portraitures while she was in France. I think it was primarily still lifes, uh, uh, individuals uh, doing just routine things. Mm. Um, it wasn't until she came to Nashville that uh, sh she started doing portraits. And wonder why did she change from still lifes or you know, more natural scenes to portraits? make a living, I think. Uh, <laughs> That's kind of, uh, somebody had to pay the rent. Um, yeah. it, was, it was interesting, the first half of her life, she was born in 1863. And the first half, she got married, separated, went to Cincinnati, studied, went to Paris, spent time in Paris and Brittany. That went right up until about 1902, when she was like 37 or so. The last half of her life in Nashville, although she started an art school when she got there in 1902, um, it did not do well. And so she supported herself with portraiture and she painted a number of important figures. She was commissioned to paint uh, James K. Polk, posthumously of course, mm -hmm. and uh, John Bell, and John was the Speaker of the House in his portraitures in the state capital, uh, mm -hmm. United States capital. Mm -hmm. uh, and then she also pointed, uh, had portraits of a lot of prominent Tennesseans, John McCannon, uh, governor, number of prominent Nashville people. And basically the latter half of her life, she supported herself that way. And more recently, there's been a um, portrait of hers discovered I understand it is one of the Cheek family, two of their children, yes. and the Cheek family is Cheekwood yes. uh, Botanical Gardens in Nashville. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit of that yeah, excitement? Yeah, uh, that portrait uh, kind of disappeared for a number of years. And a, a Nashville dealer, Stan Mabry, uh, th through a fair amount of detective work and hard work, found it mm. and uh, was able to acquire it and then Chickwood now has it. Mm -hmm. 
I understand they have two or three of her patties. Yes, they do. They do, as well as um, the Centennial Club in Nashville has several, and then the State Museum has several, I think. And uh, they don't come on the market very often. Um, I was fortunate to find one other. Uh, but um, the, um, the fact that she was a woman producing extraordinary art, she won a number of awards when she was painting in France. And one of the most extraordinary things about her, I think, was that period of time that she was painting in France, say 1890 to 1902, was an extraordinary creative period for artists. You think about who else was active at that time. Renoir, Monet, uh, Gaguin, Van Gogh. The list goes on and on. Probably the greatest assemblage of great artists since the Italian Renaissance. Mm. And she was in the middle of it. Mm. So it was a rarefied air. She was breeding at that mm. time. Um, and all gathered in that holiday place somewhat. Yeah, many, many would gather together. in Brittany. Yeah, mm -hmm. they all, almost all of them did something in Brittany. It was almost a rite of passage. Uh, and uh, then, of course, Gauguin, Van Gogh went everywhere. Mm -hmm. But uh, it was, had to be a very heady experience. And uh, you wonder why she left. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, she went from that to portrait to her. And I understand she really was never financially successful during that no, period. No, no. I think the portraits were supportive, but uh, a lot of her earlier work in Paris and all, I, I'm not sure that was very profitable. Mm. And I guess portraits were more profitable because then you didn't have photographs yeah. or digital cameras, and so to record your children or a family member, yeah. you had to commission an artist to paint them. In addition to inheriting artwork, Butler has also had the fortune to purchase one of Newman's pieces. And Henry, this is the painting that you personally have acquired of her. So tell me the story behind the acquisition. Yeah. Well, obviously it's a, another Brittany interior scene. Sounds like I have some kind of thing about Brittany interior scenes. But I thought it complemented the other one so well, I wanted to have it. I got this from Stanford Gallery. Mm -hmm. And um, it, uh, I've only had it three or four years, but uh, uh, had a few things to eat on it. That always appealed to me. Uh -huh. And I like the hat. Yeah, <laughs> and then her signature here. And that's the way she signed most of them. She didn't sign them all, but when she did sign, it was W.B. Newman. So it could be a male or a female that way. Exactly, sure. and that brings up a very good point because apparently female artists did not receive their due respect in those days. And uh, she certainly deserved the respect. And, uh, and you know, just in recent years, I, th I find so many people from Murfreesboro who never heard of her. Right. For more information about our project, Leading Ladies of Rutherford County History, visit our website, leadingladiesrutherford.com. Or if you have a story of someone from the past who inspired you, you can share it on our website. For more information about the Rutherford Arts Alliance and what we're doing to promote arts, culture, and heritage, visit rutherfordartsalliance.org. And thank you for watching. Thank you.